okay guys in this video tutorial we'll be talking about TAC polymerase which is uh, as the term suggests it's a polymerase enzyme right so it is a polymerase enzyme so it's an enzyme so let me write here it's an enzyme and why we require this enzyme we require this enzyme for polymerase chain reaction or PCR right now what is PCR PCR is for amplification of a particular gene segment for example let's say if this is a DNA let me draw a DNA so if this is a long DNA sequence and in this DNA sequence there is somewhere in the middle say this one this is a target gene of our interest we need to amplify this gene segment now what we'll do using PCR or polymerase chain reaction we can actually amplify Sorry, we can actually amplify this DNA into lot of that targeted DNA sequence. We can only get lot of this target DNA sequences instead of the whole DNA sequence, right? So it's an amplification process. Now, for this amplification process, we require a many different enzymes. And among those enzymes, in different cases, we require many different things. So most of them... Uh, and, and, and the most important one is this polymerase right now this polymerase enzyme is the key enzyme for this PCR or polymerase chain reaction uh, process now now let's first talk about uh, the basics of polymerase so when you're talking about polymerase polymerase enzyme the effect of polymerase enzyme is simply to polymerize to polymerize now what do we mean by polymerize because when you're talking about uh, different uh, nucleotide sequences, so when you're talking about DNA or RNA, so polymerase are doing is simply uh, the process is that we are having nucleotide sequences, nucleotides like adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine, and so on. So these are the nucleotide sequences. So uh, nucleotide sequences can be joined together one after another. So let's say here. Uh, for A, then G, then G again, then C, then T. So for example, this is how we can keep on joining nucleotide sequences in a particular direction if, if we are having a template. If we are having a template carrying the complementary opposite nucleotide sequence. So this is a template. Right, so this is very very important. We should have a template. If we are having a template and it is having complementary sequence like T here, C here. So if we have complementary of T is A, so we can put A. Complementary of C is G, so we can put G. So on, we can keep on adding nucleotide sequences, and we keep on attaching those nucleotide sequences. Now this process of attaching nucleotide sequences in a chain is called polymerization. Polymerization. So let me write it. It is called polymerization. Where should I write? Yeah. Let me write it here. It is called polymerization. Okay. So this polymerization process is carried out by this DNA polymerase, right? So that is the important part of DNA polymerase. Now, again, it requires two different things. One is this template strand, as I've told you before. Another thing they require for the elongation or polymerization of the template and polymerization of the DNA. And that is what is called a primer. So this is the second criteria for the polymerase reaction. It requires a primer right that means we must have a dna sequence which is a template dna having complementary nucleotide sequences uh, and also we need a primer which is simply a short stretch of uh, a short stretch so let me take this color a short stretch of nucleotide sequence here it is which is providing a 3 prime hydroxyl because this polymerase any polymerase that are present here they require this 3 prime hydroxyl to work any polymerase means uh, I should mention uh, clearly that DNA polymerase, whatever we are talking about, the DNA polymerase, it should have a 3 prime hydroxyl end to elongate and start the polymerization process. So now it's getting the hydroxyl as a result of the primer, and obviously it is having the template. So now it will keep on adding the nucleotide sequences in a particular direction. Now here it is another important term, it's the directionality. Right? Directionality. So directional synthesis is very very important. Now usually DNA polymerase synthesizes from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. 
right so it usually synthesizes so you can see this is a 5 prime and this is a 3 prime so it synthesizes from 5 prime to 3 prime direction right so these are the basic features of polymerase enzymes now another feature I'm going to talk about about the rest of the polymerase enzyme and that is called the proof reading activity now for example say there are template strands the template strand carries different nucleotide sequences let's say it is having a A it's having a T C C and G and A again like that now during the addition of nucleotide uh, reading this template because let's say when it reads this template is having a C definitely the polymerase will bring G here and place G here when it reads the template is again a G uh, so it will put a C here so this is the job of polymerase to read what is the coding template or what is uh, the, the template DNA is having then it will bring uh, some nucleotide which is complementary, uh, complementary to that template DNA right now sometimes it also brings some uh, wrong nucleotide sequences for example here if it, this is a, a it brings let's say instead of T because T is the perfect match here so instead of T it brings a G so G and A it is a mismatch right it shouldn't be paired there so if it provides this kind of mistake or error ne erroneous nucleotide sequences there is a mechanism also found in polymerase enzyme which is called the proof reading or exonuclease activity it's called exonuclease activity exonuclease activity or it is also called as proof reading because just like the work of proof readers so they can read uh, what they have done and they can cleave this sequence out that's why I've termed that exonuclease activity so they can cleave uh, the erroneous nucleotide out and then bring the right one here in this case T is the right one then bring T here and keep on synthesizing so these are the important features of a general polymerase enzyme now when you are talking about TAC polymerase it is also slightly specific and special type of polymerase that are used during the PCR reaction now in this reaction this TAC polymerase is having some important features they are having all the features that are uh, present in normal polymerase enzymes but also it is having some important features then the most important feature that is have uh, that is there for the TAC polymerase is uh, it is very very much temperature temperature uh, what you can say uh, resistive so uh, the stack polymerase can usually present in high temperature it's a high temperature uh, tolerant so it's a temperature tolerant so it's a temperature tolerant kind of uh, polymerase right so the stack polymerase is a temperature tolerant that means it can be present or it can present at more than uh, say it, it can present at 90 degrees Celsius temperature it can polymerize DNA sequence in 80 degrees Celsius temperature and so so it can keep on this polymerization process in this high like this 80 or 90 degrees Celsius temperatures right on the rest of the polymers that we have discussed the normal type of polymers which are not temperature sensitive their temperature uh, uh, level so what they do usually they usually polymerizes during the room temperature or the physical body temperature which is 37 degrees Celsius temperature but if we increase the temperature the polymerization efficiency for this normal kind of polymerase actually drops down but this TAC polymerase is having the enormous capability of continuing the polymerization process at this high temperature and why it is important because during PCR what we are doing in the steps of PCR we first uh, what we can say dissociate both the strands from each other so we heat uh, we provide enormous heat like 90 degrees Celsius temperature of heat and this 90 degrees Celsius of temperature of heat will denature our DNA strands it denatures the DNA strands and then we need to anneal our primer because primer is required for an initiation of the process so we anneal our primer after annealing the primer we again provide so during this annealing of the primer we provide 55 degrees or 54 degrees Celsius temperature then we add our polymerase enzyme so let's say these are the polymerase enzyme so these are the TAC polymerase here so TAC pol so this TAC polymerase will then bind and they will carry out the polymerization process so let me write it here there they will carry out the polymerization process one in this direction one is this direction at 72 degrees Celsius temperature usually so for carrying this process in this high 
temperatures uh, it requires this kind of temperature tolerant type of polymerase so if we bring normal polymerase it will be failing to to doing to do this job right so that's a very important advantage of tac polymerase that's why we are using tac polymerase in this pcr processes right because pcr we require high temperature okay so that's the major temperature uh, tolerance of the tac polymerase now the other feature of the tac polymerase it's actually 80 to 90 kilo uh, mo kilo dalton molecular weight protein so a small uh, molecular weight protein and why it is termed as tac polymerase because it is isolated it is isolated from so let me let me come down a little bit yeah let's say here we usually isolate that so isolation isolation is from a bacteria called thermus aquaticus thermus aquaticus right so this bacteria is a type of thermophilic bacteria so we know what thermophilic bacteria are thermophilic bacteria that means this bacteria love to be in the higher temperature so they love higher temperature so this bacteria usually possess this kind of enzymes because they need to stay in the high temperatures so they need to carry out all the necessary cellular processes in that high temperature for carrying out uh, polymerization DNA replication and duplication and all these things they require this temperature uh, tolerant uh, uh, polymerase right so that's uh, the uh, isolation of this tac polymers as they are coming from thermus aquaticus they are that's why we call we take this t from thermus and we take this aq from uh, this aquaticus so it's giving us the tac and the tac polymerase okay but again now let's bring to the next important point about using this uh, tac polymerase and that is obviously uh, sorry let's bring sorry 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 there's a jam there okay let me take a bit let me take a bit upper okay now let's see here uh, let's see here uh, what we are talking here another important part which is uh, remember exonuclease activity or proofreading activity now usually the polymerase that we are talking about they are having uh, two types of exonuclease there can be possible uh, usually the polymerization as I have told you the directionality of polymerase is important and the directionality is 5 prime to 3 prime and there is the exonuclease activity and the exonuclease activity is also having a directionality and the directionality for the exonuclease activity is uh, 3 prime to 5 prime so the exonuclease usually work at 3 prime to 5 prime direction right some polymerase have that some polymerase does, does not have uh, have this so in this case of tac polymerase they do not have this 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activators and they, this is a very very important and this is a one kind of you can say this is a kind of mistake this is a kind of uh, disadvantage of tac polymerase there's an advantage that this is very much high temperature tolerant but again this is a disadvantage that it is uh, not having the exonuclease activities it is not having not having 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity so as a result of that what it is suggesting us that whenever tac polymerase make a mistake during the polymerization process uh, it cannot remedy that mistake it cannot reverse that mistake or cannot uh, refill that gap right so as a result of that let's say here it puts a wrong uh, g instead of t so it remains like that so after this polymerization step there is a high degree of error right so there is a high degree of error is there if we are using tac polymerase but still we use tac polymerase because uh, this kind of errors that it is giving us is pretty less so it's 10 to the power minus 4 to 10 to the power minus 5 nucleotide errors so the errors in 1 in a 10 to the power minus 4 or 10 to the power minus 5 nucleotide so this error rate is a little bit less a very very less but still uh, it is providing us a good insight because it is having a high temperature tolerant level and obviously let me tell you the fact that uh, how much it can tolerate the temperature it can tolerate the temperature of 90 degree celsius temperature for the half life of 40 minutes 
so it can stay up to 40 minutes of its half life at 90 degrees Celsius temperature. So it's a pretty good temperature tolerant, but again, it's uh, not having the exonuclease activity. So if you're using this stack polymerase, we need to compromise uh, the proof reading over the polymerization process, right? So we need to sacrifice one important ability, and uh, and obviously uh, in in modern age, in, in new nowadays, what we can use, we can actually use this stack polymerase. We can use this stack polymerase error. Uh, or error rate of the tag polymerase and using this error near uh, nature of the tag polymerase we can modify it into another type of PCR and it is called error prone error prone PCR that's something new concept you can find a video on error prone PCR in my YouTube channel also now uh, why this error prone PCR as they are lacking the ability of 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity we use those polymerase like TAC polymerase, there are other polymerases too. We use those error prone polymerase so that during the polymerization process, so let's say this is a template and this is the polymers. During this polymerization process, we want more and more mistakes like denoted here in this red color. So more and more mistakes. Why we want more mistakes? Because this mistake will give us variation and this variation will lead to provide us a mutation, right? Because the change in DNA and nucleotide sequences, it leads to the mutation. Now we can generate mutation. So we can use this error-prone PCR to generate to generate mutation. So we can cause what is called the mutagenesis using this error-prone PCR by modifying uh, the activity of TAC polymerase using its ability uh, for not having the 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity. Right. So that's it, and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.